Hi, and welcome to this episode of Freedom Lifestyle. I'm Ken Brown, the CEO of Destiny Global, and I want to welcome you today. Um, we're going to continue our teaching on the laws of success. And today's uh, lesson is one that I highly value, and it brought a lot of clarity to me in my own life, and that is the law of desire. The last episode, we talked about um, we talked about sowing and reaping and, and really the law of value. And this one kind of brings it into context because what were you designed to do? And there's a big question when you start getting into this is what is what is what is desire? That is what what's inside of you that needs to be unlocked. And that's the first question I have is what is locked inside you? What have you if you're not fulfilling your desire, meaning that you have a calling on your life to do something that you've been wanting to do, something that was literally implanted in you from the time that you were small. Some of you, even in the womb of your mother, you had a calling. You had a calling that was set apart. We know this because in the greatest book ever written, in the, in the early chapters of Luke, it talks about uh, a, young, a young lady who was pregnant and as this baby was growing and as the baby grew, it knew its whole life about what its destiny was. It knew its destiny uh, and lived it out over his whole period of life. And his name was John. John knew what his purpose was. And so we know that we are designed to fulfill something in this world. Each one of us are unique and different. And you have a calling that separates you from every other person on earth. So today I want to talk to you about what is your desire and how to begin to live out your destiny as you work towards fulfilling that desire. You see, when you think about, when you think about revealing, uh, revealing things, that means that you're opening something up. So some of you have yet to open yourself up to really know what is your design. What was I made for? Many of you may be wondering that right now. You may be in a third world country and persecuted. You, you know, right now we have a, a, a war that's just beginning in Russia and in, in coming into Ukraine. And for those of you involved in that or know someone, we're praying for you. We support you. We know that this is, is, is not what we would wanted to see and not for you. And we pray for your protection. We pray for you. But also these things, hard pressed times can lead to something. And that is, what is your desire? Right? We all know that the very name of this show is, is freedom, right? So when you think about freedom, a key aspect of that is what are you doing to create freedom in your life? Freedom of debt, emotional freedom, spiritual freedom. Some of you, it's physical freedom. That seems very harsh, but it's the reality of the world that we live in. Much of the world, two thirds of the, two -thirds of the world, in fact, live in third world conditions or are living in conditions other than what they would desire for themselves. So some of you may find yourself in that position today. So how do you go about finding and fulfilling your destiny? Well, you cannot know your destiny unless you know you're fulfilling your desire. Because that reveals what you were created to do. In the book, First Steps to Wealth, Danny wrote a whole section on this that is absolutely, it's incredible because it really talks about that of an eagle. So when you think about an eagle, uh, it comes from an egg. But inside that egg, it's not a chicken. It's not something that's going to go scratch the ground and scratch around and lay eggs and be something that we fry and eat or we cook and eat. It's actually an eagle is set apart. An eagle is, is something that soars high. And from its very birth, it starts working towards its desire to fly. Its desire to soar. Its desire to hunt. Its desire to protect. And its desire to multiply. So if you think about that eagle, that eagle sets about it from a very early age of everything it's doing is a mother cares for it. And it starts to grow. It starts to get its wings. It starts revealing itself over time. You are very much the same way. So what desire have you had in you? Maybe a farmer, maybe you want to be an engineer, maybe, maybe you want to be a, a coach, maybe you want to help people, a therapist, maybe you want to be a, in, work, on, work on cars, maybe you want to be a mechanic. 
Whatever is inside you, you need to work on letting it out. And that's going to be done by gaining skills. We've talked about that. That's where your value comes from in this world. You see, all these lies, these laws are so intertwined with each other, right? In fact, I got a Freudian slip there, didn't I? Because if you're not living out your design, you're living a lie in your life. See? You're not, you're not fulfilling what you were created to be. So as you begin to really think and pray through, what do I really want to do? Because that's a question that I'm often asked is, how do I know the will of the Creator? How do I know God's will for my life? What is your desire? That was put in you for a reason. What do you want to do? How do you want to help others? That's the one question is, how do you want to help others? See, everything that I just mentioned helps other people. How is that true, Ken? Well, think about an engineer. An engineer designs many things, but let's talk about a bridge for a minute. Think about if you're trying to go over one area to another and you didn't have a bridge. How difficult would that be to carry your family across that? You wouldn't have roads. You wouldn't have buildings. You wouldn't have so many things. But that bridge, for example, it has to be designed correctly so that it's safe for passage. It also connects a point, two points, so people can get across something. So even the simplest thing that you take over, that you take for granted every day that you're likely going over, many of you, I'm sure, go over bridges. And the fact is, is that that was designed by somebody that actually was thinking about the load that it's going to carry, how it's going to protect those people. And then, of course, longevity. How long is it going to last? So the simplest of things affect people. Think about if we didn't have roads, if we didn't have bridges. Think about that for a moment. Traveling from point A to point B would be very difficult. In some places, it's difficult enough, let alone without those. So if you think for a moment, everything that we can do adds value to other humans. Whether you're a baker, whether that you're um, working in construction, you know, there's nothing more valuable sometimes than being able to see. As I grew up in a household where my father built very large buildings, and he built homes as well. But I can remember going out there and seeing the first time when I was a little kid, and I saw just this field. And there was literally nothing there. I'm thinking, man, what's this going to be? And then all of a sudden I see that the tractors come through and flatten the ground. Then you watch them come and lay the the sand down. Then you start watching them put the forms down. Then you watch them put the steel in. They begin to pour concrete. And then all of a sudden you see this foundation, the thing that supports everything that's going to be built from that point. And before long you have a building that's resurrected. And that is such a fulfilling thing to see because something did not exist there before, yet now there's something standing. Someone had a desire to see that come to fruition. Someone drew the plans for that person to know how to build it. Everything is connected. But when you think about this for a moment, the people who do that, they have a desire to help someone else have a home. They have a desire to help somebody else have an office. And they want to see it and come watch their dream become a reality. And each one of you are designed, each person watching this right now, you have a desire in you that you want to do something. What is stopping you from doing that? What is the limitation? Some of it is you've been told you can't do it. Or you're letting someone else suppress your dreams. That happens very often. And that is regardless of your walk of life. Some of you have physical restraints that you can't do some of the things you want to do. Think about ways you can Think about ways of adding value in your place of employment. If you're an entrepreneur, think of things that you can do for yourself to add those value add things in your work, in your employment, that's going to help bring that value and let you show your skill. A lot of you have buried that down and you're not showing people what you can really do. I see this quite frequently. Simply because someone told someone they can't do it. You see, we have some friends here of Destiny Global. In fact, we have many clients that have experienced this, but this one in particular. Her parents told her over and over again that she wasn't loved, that she wasn't appreciated. And so that that really affected everything else for the rest of her life until she came to this organization, began to realize that she was loved and that she was appreciated and that she did have skill. And when she unlocked those skills, the next thing she knows, she starts a business. That business then begins to lead to revenues and profits, then to employees. 
And now she has several employees doing her things and she's got a multi-million dollar business that all started because of her belief that she could do something because someone believed in her. It's very hard for anyone to accomplish anything without someone believing in them. That goes back to the law of value. And you have to realize that you are valued and that you're loved and that you're appreciated. And that starts with the very person who gave you breath, the creator of all the universe. You see, when he sets value in you, no one else can take, take that away from you. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in with, within this world. See, no one can take my value away. They can take everything else, but they cannot take my value because my, my value was not given to me by man. It was given to me by the creator of the universe. When he gave that to me, that means that no man can stop me if I said in my mind that I'm going to do it. And I'm going to sit about my work vigorously and work towards that. And that may mean that you have to do some tasks to get there. Right? You, you, don't, you don't become a graduate student in college without going to, to elementary school, to high school, to get your undergraduate degree. You see, you have to go through a process to get that and hone your skill. But I want to, I want to say something for a moment. You see, as we look at it, it says your desire reveals your design. So your desire begins to show what you want to do. As you begin to do that, you begin working towards your design, which reveals your destiny. Because the more you do what you are called to do with your life, which each one of you, by the way, you are persistent, you are enthusiastic, uh, you love people. You know how I know this? Because I can go back to your childhood. Your life might, right now might not look that way. But if I go back to your childhood, you're a persistent person. You see, you walk. And as a baby, there was a time where you couldn't walk. And you started walking. And you would fall down and get up. You've seen babies do this all the time. They have to learn to walk. But first it goes from, a, from being you know, immobile to rolling over to then setting up to then crawling, then to walking. There's a process to go through. And some of you just want to get to your destiny. Let me tell you something. you got to work. You have to be persistent. And you have that in you, naturally, inherently built in you. Because as you've grown, you've had to gain skills. You've had to learn to talk. You've had to learn to get along with other people. Yes, you've had to learn to communicate. You've had to learn to appreciate other people. So as you think about what God created you to do, when you plug into that power and you start living it, you start feeling fulfilled. It brings joy to you. And when you bring joy, that makes you magnetic to other people. We've talked about this. It's sowing and reaping. As you start feeling valued, you start showing other people value and they're going to be drawn to you. They want to be around you because they can see that something's different about you. When you start living out your design, your grand design for your life, you become a magnet for other people because they can see it. And also your talent. Because see, when you start living out your design and you start sharpening those skills, you become the best at what you're supposed to do. Whatever you're built for. See, when I came here, I didn't have all the skills necessarily to be in front of a camera. I had to work on those things because I want to communicate effectively. I want to make sure that what I'm saying to you is what I want to say to you and not get nervous or bumbling or confused, but be on point and on focus. And that's exactly what you can do with your life. You can build those skills. There is literally nothing you can't do if you put your mind to it. Some of you, that may require getting away from the people that are holding you back. And that's a big sacrifice. Some of you need to start over. You need to start with a clean slate. And that's okay. Many people of this organization have done that. If you look at Pastor Dinesh and everything that he's done and been able to accomplish with Grace Network, finding itself persecuted in every form and way at times, people not even wanting it to exist, yet it exists today and is doing better than ever. And it's just now really getting started. I can't wait for the future of where all this goes. And I'm so glad that I get to talk to you through this network. So I want you to think about this. What are you designed to do? What is your desire? Start living that out. Start thinking about it. Start working on plans. So you get that vision. 
Again, all these laws are connected. But when you start living out your vision, your desire starts becoming sharper. And sometimes it can be a little bit out of focus. And as you begin to work through what your desire is inside, things become clearer and clearer and clearer. As you start building your skill, you start separating yourself where you're asked for, that you're requested to do things. And even if even those of you that have bosses that don't particularly uh, like you, when you start doing things exceptionally well, they don't have to like you to appreciate you. I know that seems odd. There's some people that just have personalities that are just not grateful. But the reality is when you're doing a good job, they know that. And you'll be the one sought out and sought after. Now, eventually that will lead you to bigger and better things, to become the boss of others, to become a lender and not a borrower. Because that's where freedom starts is when you begin to, to fulfill your desire, your destiny becomes in focus and you begin to do that. And you know what? You leave a legacy behind you that makes your grandchildren proud to know what you've done how do i know that because of my own grandfather yeah he was he lived through world war one world war two the great depression and helped people through that and as he began to do that he he helped people through a time where things were rationed where there, no one had anything literally they would get the, the daily ration of bread and i remember him telling me about rice and beans and a little flour and a little milk and i think butter and they looked forward to those things. But he began to learn how to trade with people of things that they had excess of others and begin to take care of communities all over the, the southern United States. Yet he didn't have himself. He became a connector to find what someone else and help them meet their needs. Guess what? That separated him from other men. And he became a great leader. And many people respected him. Many, many pastors throughout this, this great nation have gone to him and sat on his porch. When I was a little boy, I remember sitting on the swings and seeing great men of God come and sit on, his, sit on the porch in the swings with us and him just pour into them wisdom. He, he, see, he found that, not because he wanted to, it's hardship that led him to see his desire to help people. So what is your desire to help people? What do you want to do? And what is holding you back? Eliminate that thing. Your mindset. Think through what's holding you back. And as you begin to pour and you begin to do and you begin to work, because there's a price to be paid, okay? You're going to have to do the work to get there. You're not going to become great at anything without work. Repetition done well leads to greatness. If you think about the great Michael Jordan, basketball player that's known throughout the world that played for the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan didn't even make his, his, talked about him back in high school. He wasn't revered nor highly respected. It wasn't until college, really, that he started blossoming and separated himself. And then in the NBA, considered one of the greatest players of all time. But you know what? It took him shot after shot, practice after practice, hour upon hour of honing his skill to shoot that ball through the hoop, to pass that ball, to dribble, to get up and down the court, to play defense. It takes hours and hours of work and repetition. But in that leads to greatness because your skill becomes so focused. If you think of great, about great painters, the same thing is true there, or artists. The same is true in really industry, any industry that I think of. So the fact is, is what is holding you back? What is stopping you from fulfilling God's great design for your life? You need to think through two things. You need to ponder through these, these things. You need to work towards it and ask him for clarity. And as you begin to do it, some of you are working on your, you already know what you're designed to do, but you're struggling with it. Find yourself a mentor, someone that you can look up to. Everybody has one. There's someone who does something better than you today. Find that person. It doesn't have to be up close either. It can be through the internet. It can be through TV, watching their things. I know this is going to sound funny, but I like watching Bobby Flay cook. Why? He is a fantastic chef, regarded as one of the greatest of all time. I love to watch him how he prepare, prepares meals. That's one of my side hobbies. I love to cook for people. I find that very interesting because Danny herself 
one of the things he loves to do is cook for people. Now, I don't do a lot of the cooking in our home because my wife is a fantastic cook, if you can't tell. She's a very good cook, but I love to grill steaks and do some things that are out of the ordinary. Really things on what we call the grill or barbecue. So as, as I go about trying to learn tools and techniques and ways to do things, why? Because I want to make that meal really special when I cook it. I want it to be, I want it to please the people that are sitting across from me and say, wow, that's really good. How did you do that? Well, there's people that you can look up to in any area of your life. Whether you know them or whether you're just viewing them from afar. They can still affect you if you're paying attention and pay attention to the details. If you think about baking a cake, I talked about that in our planning episode. If you're not following the ingredients, the ingredient list, well, you're not going to make a good cake. Ask me how I know, because I've done that before and missed an ingredient. The cake didn't rise because I forgot to put the eggs in it. So it's knowing that you have to do something, but you need to follow a recipe for success in your life. See, I have a recipe book that I call The Greatest Book Ever Written. And in the many books and chapters in there, it gives me guidance for how I should live my life, how I should value other people. And I encourage you, I encourage you, brothers and sisters, to find your way, to begin to read and pour into uh, the book that I read is called the Bible, and it's unashamedly. Why? I don't care what religion you are. The fact is it has fantastic teachings in it of leadership. It's the greatest book ever written on leadership. It tells us is the differences between poor leaders and good leaders, between how to be a, a man that is respected and revered, how to be a woman of character, how to be children that bring honor to your parents, how to be an employee and a leader and a king and a governor that people want to, want to uh, fight for, who want to stand up for. And that's so needed today. This world is chaotic. Men and women standing up for truth, helping one another through hard times. What is your desire? I encourage you today to press in and think about why you are on this earth and what destiny lies ahead when you start following God's design for your life. You see, He has a purpose for you. I have plans for you, He says, plans to prosper you, not for calamity. You are set apart. Seek and you will find. Begin to press into things. Sharpen your skills. Do your best every day. Don't just worry about doing your, the job for your boss. Do it for the king of kings. Do it for the creator. He tells us that. Do your work unto me. Serve other people. Take care of them. And as you meet those needs and sharpen those skills, you will become the person that is sought out amongst all the others. For, for what you were created to do, for the specific work you do. So I encourage you today, I encourage you today to begin to think about what you are doing and are you really living out your desire? Press into those things that are holding you back. Begin to think and evaluate things. Don't let your limitations of your mind hold you back. Maybe you're in a place where you're totally forbidden to do anything. Find freedom. Get out of that place. Move. Find your freedom. Find that place where you can begin to live your desire. Some of you, it's just standing up for what you know is right. Some of you, it could be in a place of work where you're just doing a mundane job and you're doing the same thing. Find a new job that helps you meet your desire. Yes, it could be a change. And yes, you have bills. I understand that. Find a way to do both. Some of you are called to be leaders. Each one of you are called to be a leader, in fact, in, a diff in different ways, whether you're a parent, whether in your place of work and you're leading a project, whether you're starting something in your farming fields. Do that job exceptionally well. Show others your skills. If you lack skills, work to get them. Find techniques, find tools that help you do that. Remember, every day it's just like that eagle as he comes out of that out of that. Uh, egg and then begins to grow and the feathers start coming in longer and wider and they begin to spread their wings because one day you're going to stand on the edge of that nest and you're going to launch out and you're going to soar and the world is waiting on you to do that 
Step out, be different. And thank you for joining this episode of Freedom Lifestyle. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.